On the 24th of February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. One year on, the war continues with thousands of lives lost. Cities turned into ruins and lives of the Ukrainian people turned upside down. Well, one year ago, Russian President Putin, he announced his so-called special military operation in Ukraine. Putin's aim, he claimed, was to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine, a former Soviet country. Well, Ukrainians flagged Putin's aim to erase their 1,000-year national identity, and a stiff resistance began taking shape. Since then, Ukraine managed to reclaim some of the lost territory. Western countries came together to back Ukraine. They gave and pledged billions of dollars of military and humanitarian aid. World organizations pledged investment towards the destroyed or lost infrastructure. And as both the sides are expecting a possible spring and summer offensive, the United Nations, they voted overwhelmingly to demand Russia immediately and unconditionally withdraw its troops from Ukraine. Ukraine earned a strong backing in a non-binding vote where 141 member countries voiced support for the resolution. Seven opposed it, while 32, including China and India, abstained. Well, India's permanent representative to the UN, Richira Kambosh, said the resolution wasn't enough to achieve the goal of lasting peace. However, India said it will always call for dialogue and diplomacy as the only viable way out of the conflict. But Russia dismissed the resolution with its UN representative Vasily Nebenzia calling Ukraine neo-Nazi and accusing the West of sacrificing the country and the developing world and their desire to beat Russia. Meanwhile, the United States announced an additional $2 billion in security assistance to Ukraine. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan also said G7 nations will announce on Friday a new round of sanctions against Russia. Well, the sanctions will include countries that are trying to backfill products that are denied to Russia. When he was asked about the F-16 jets, which Kyiv requested to resist the possible Russian offensive, he said F-16s are not a question for the short-term fight. They are a question for the long-term defence of Ukraine. Well, during the G7 meet, the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is expected to urge the Allies to move faster in order to provide arms to Ukraine. The UK has been the Ukraine's most prominent ally since its conflict with Russia. With the country being a member in NATO and the G7, it's also echoed the UK's call to provide jets and tanks. Well, according to experts, Western weaponry can turn the course of the war for Ukraine, as it's already proven on the battlefield with its capabilities when in August a better armed Ukraine launched a southern counteroffensive around Kherson, the only land gateway to Crimea. Remember, Crimea was annexed by Russia in 2014 and hosts its Black Sea fleet. Well, on November 9th, Russia ordered forces to abandon Kherson, the only regional capital it had taken so far in its invasion. Well, let's get more now on this poignant day from our correspondent, Anas Manik, who joins us there from Hassan in Ukraine. What a, what a visceral day for everybody today to mark. Well, yes, Katie, uh, it's Kherson is a ghost town today, marks one year of the invasion of Ukraine uh, by the Russian forces. And uh, this city, that this place, in fact, where I'm standing, it's a central square of Kherson, where people had spontaneously come out after the liberation on the 11th of November last year. Remember, this city was under Russian occupation for about eight to nine months since March last year until the 11th of November. It's strategically very important. And across me, I'll just get aside for the benefit of our viewers and I'll just show you the Nipia River as well. Uh, and if you can probably see, we'll just try to show, uh, zoom in and show you as well. Uh, that's the Nipia River, which holds a very 
critical and uh, strategic importance for the Russian side uh, across it's generally fl flows from the uh, it generally flows from the southern side and uh, 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 and generally in the southern direction as well through Western Russia Belarus and Ukraine onwards to the Black Sea that past that you see that's coming in beyond that is the Nipir River and what uh, we've see, we've even heard even now from other journalists uh, that uh, it's not advised to go nearer to that side for one very reason that you can be probably in the line of fire uh, one year on we've been hearing this particular area this particular city and the region by and large has been shelled uh, uh, journalists are advised to wear uh, flak jackets like these uh, their their safety helmets in order to be properly identified and in order to ensure their maximum safety uh, uh, I'll just show you again. I'll get aside and I'll show you. I'll try to show you. This is practically a ghost town, uh, despite the fact that this this place has been liberated and is now under Ukrainian control. But despite of that, uh, despite of that, uh, uh, you, that palpable fear remains. Uh, residents have been asked to stay indoors by the authorities just for today, uh, for the very reason in order to avoid uh, being uh, being spotted or uh, being in the line of fire. Kitty. Yeah, you say there, residents being asked to stay indoors. How nervous is the atmosphere, would you say, Anis? Well, there's general fear. Uh, as I said, uh, you'd barely be spotting any cars on the road. Uh, over here in the frame, you can probably see behind me as well. Uh, there's barely any traffic, barely anybody. Even taking a stroll down the road uh, today marks that grim one year to the uh, uh, to the Russian side's uh, special military operation, as they say. Uh, it's been over 72 hours since this whole region, not just city, uh, but in fact the uh, Kherson Oblast has been shelled, extensively shelled. Uh, beyond the Nipir River uh, is where from where the shells have been incoming. So uh, there's this palpable fear, there's this anxiety, this grimness in the air. It's not just in the air. In fact, it can be it can be felt uh, the moment you exit Mikolaiv. It's about a 70 kilometer drive. In usual cases, it would take 40 to 50 minutes. It took us about an hour and a half to get here because of the road situation. Uh, there had been a battle that had been fought along the entire N85 highway. Uh, 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 an, an infantry battle, a tank battle that was fought both uh, vis a vis the artillery and the infantry. Uh, and eventually, the uh, Russian side were pushed back. The Ukrainian side uh, did come over and they did end up liberating these areas and these regions. But this palpable fear can be felt. You'll see while you're driving from Mikolaev to Kherson, you'll see more and more destroyed buildings, destroyed uh, infrastructure, and that speaks itself. You know, the wreckage speaks volume uh, for the for the damage that has been inflicted for all of these months where, when the battle raged on, the battle for Kherson, and eventually uh, Kherson was liberated on the 11th of November. Katie? Anas Malik, thank you so much from us on there corresponding for us here on We On today. Uh, we are going to talk more about this of Russia's invasion of Ukraine one year on now with um, Dr. Lada Roslicki, the founder of Black Trident Defense and Security Consulting Group there in Ukraine. A pleasure to have you on with us today. Thank you for taking the time. What a depressing day and, and, and grim situation that we're in now one year on. How does this all end? Well, eventually it will end with peace. And the type of peace is what we're wondering. Uh, will Russia be allowed to uh, use corruption and genocide as an instrument of global leadership? If so, then uh, it ends with a, a global peace without Ukraine existing. And it's very depressing to see this extreme lack of continued uh, integrity, applied integrity uh, from our world's leaders. So it's, it is a very depressing, sad day, um, but <laughs> year two is, is starting as well. So you think world leaders need to be doing more? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is completely ridiculous. With all due respect to the economic uh, system and financial systems, at the end of the day, uh, we are in the 21st century. And barbaric 
genociding of nations openly with access to information on the internet. It's not even 20 years ago where we had no access or very limited access to what is happening on the ground. Here it's very obvious and it's 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 really uh, dumbfounding to see that real slow movement of people and and leaders and states and corporations who who don't care. They care about money more than than people or, or dignity or global security. Mm -hmm. So, what are you talking about here? More more weaponry or more boots on the ground to assist from the West? Well, if we're it's not only the West. I mean, we do have the Rammstein Group, which is over 41 countries, and we have the great majority of uh, countries of the United Nations supporting Ukraine. Unfortunately, India is not yet one of them, but I have hope that that it will be. Uh, so, boots on the ground and weapons, most certainly, Ukraine needs them because otherwise, we will be eliminated. We will die and our land will be taken over. It's, I mean, let's get serious. It's about the wealth of Ukraine. Ukraine, not only the bread basket of the world, uh, she has uh, many, many reserves of lithium, gold, uh, precious metals that are, are very much needed in, in uh, the future for people to survive. So while we're talking boots on the ground and help Ukraine defend itself, and its own people, and it's what's rightfully theirs. Uh, we also need to start thinking about really effective solutions for the future. And um, not it's too early for negotiations right now, but we need to start thinking about solutions of a type of global uh, world that we want to see. And we certainly do not want to be seeing a world in the future where a country like uh, Russia can just invade and kill, use chemical weapons, forbidden weapons, mines, and, and get away with it. Dr. Lada, Ross Lickey, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure hearing your view on the situation on this very sad day of Russia's one-year anniversary of invading Ukraine. Thank you so much.